This video is a beginner's crash course to Apple Motion in less than 12 minutes. So when you first open up Apple Motion, you should be greeted by the project browser. If you're not greeted by the project browser, you can go up to file, new from project browser, or you can push command, option, and N. When you're in the project browser, you're gonna see stuff like the motion project, final cut effect, generator transition, and title. You're gonna use these when you wanna build different plugins for Final Cut Pro. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Final Cut title. So go ahead and select that, then move over to the right side where you're gonna see your different presets. Today, we're gonna to work on a 1080p timeline and we're gonna leave the frame rate at 2997. I recommend that you leave these settings at whatever you typically film your videos at. From there, we can set our duration. Today, I'm just gonna leave it at five seconds. After that, go ahead and push open. When you first open up Apple Motion, it should look just like this. Down at the bottom is your timeline. The left side is your your library and your inspector. This panel is your layers and this right here is your viewer. Go ahead and select type text here then push delete to delete it. Coming down to the bottom of our viewer you'll see all of these different options. We're going to go ahead and select the rectangle object. If you want additional shapes, you can click on this down arrow and you'll see a rectangle, a circle, and a line, as well as the ability to use the Bezier tool if you prefer. Go ahead and select the rectangle tool, then click and drag on your viewer. After that, jump to the left side and find your inspector. In the inspector, we can change stuff like the fill color, fill opacity, the outline settings. Let's go ahead and disable the outline. Then we'll jump into the geometry settings and we're gonna drag up this roundness slider. That's gonna give us some nice rounded edges on our rectangle. Now I'm not particularly happy with the scaling on the rectangle, so let's find the size panel. If we click this down arrow, you can see the width and height. I'm gonna set the width to 450, and I'm gonna set the height to 100. After that, we can jump back into the style settings. I want this to look like a red subscribe button, so I'm gonna change the fill color over to red. Now that we have the red going, let's go ahead and add in some text. Coming to the bottom of your viewer, we can select the text tool. You can also achieve that with T. Click where you want your text to show up, and I'm just gonna write in subscribe. After that, I want it to be centered, so I'm going to change the alignment to the center. Then I'm going to select the arrow tool from this panel right here, and click and drag. You can also get that tool with A. After that, go to your left side and find the size options in your inspector. If we click and drag on this slider, you can see how that scales up our text. I'm just gonna readjust it so it's directly in the middle of our rectangle. Okay, so let's get into the, some basic animations. So let's go ahead and animate our rectangle. Selecting our rectangle, go into your property settings. In your properties, you'll see all of these options like position, rotation, scale, shear, and anchor point. There's also blending options and stuff like drop shadow. What we're mostly gonna be working with today is the position and scale. Now on any of these, you can see there is an X and Y axis, but if you want the Z axis as well, you can click on this down arrow and you will see the Z option option here. Over to the right is these grayed out diamonds. If you click those, those will actually create keyframes. I'm gonna undo that with Command Z. Coming down to the scale options, let's go ahead and expand that with that down arrow. What I want is for this rectangle to pop out from the left side over to the right. So what we'll need to do is affect the X scale. But right now, if I scale that down, you'll notice how it's shrinking into the middle. And I want it directly from the left-hand side. So we're gonna need to change the anchor point. To do that, we can either set the exact values here in the anchor point settings, or we can come down to where our arrow tool is, click this down arrow, and see all of these additional tools. I'm gonna go ahead and select the anchor point. Click on this red arrow and drag our anchor point over to the left-hand side. Now, if it's not lining up perfectly, what we can do is actually set our exact value. So I'm gonna come over to the anchor point settings and set negative 225. Now we can actually animate this object. Ensuring that your playhead is at the very beginning, go ahead and find the X axis under your scale settings. Drag that down all the way to zero. Then come over to the right side and click to add a keyframe. Now we can move forward a full second and then set that back to 100. Because I changed the value after adding a keyframe, it automatically creates a new keyframe wherever the playhead is. You can see those keyframes down here on the timeline. I can actually click and drag these keyframes to adjust the timing. So if it's playing out a little bit too slow for me, I can actually click and drag this down to half a second. So now it will play much faster. 
As it is, it feels a little bit jagged in its animation and I want it to be a little bit smoother. So we can come over to the right side and click on this icon. These three diamonds are your keyframe editor. Looking at the bottom of the screen, we can actually see the different keyframes here. You can click and drag these keyframes to adjust your animation accordingly. You can also click and drag to select multiple points, then right click. From here, you can change the easing options as well as the interpolation. We're gonna select ease both to give this a nice smooth animation. And now you can see this has a nice S curve to it. If I play through, the animation is much smoother. We've now animated the rectangle. Let's go ahead and animate our text. Selecting your text, go back to the very beginning of the timeline. Now you can go up to this top menu. Up here you'll find stuff like objects with cameras, lights, drop zones. You'll also find filters, which you can use for different effects. And it should be noted, you can actually animate all of these effects using keyframes. But in the middle is behaviors. Behaviors are immensely powerful and I have a ton of tutorials covering this, but today we're just gonna use a few basic ones. Selecting your behaviors, we'll come on down to text basic. We're just gonna select arrange in. This is a preset animation in Apple Motion. So if I play through, we can actually see that our text flies in very nicely. Now, if I want to speed up the animation of the text, I can actually locate the behavior parameter here marked in purple. If you don't see this, you may need to enable it here using this gear icon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag and shorten down the length of our animation. So now the text will come in much faster. Now let's say we wanna have an arrow pointer come up and actually click on this. Well, that is where we can actually use the library in Apple Motion. Coming to the far left side, you can see your library here. Under the library, you have so many things like behaviors, filters, generators, particle emitters, replicators. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at shapes. So go ahead and select shapes and then locate the arrow cursor. Now first, ensuring my playhead is at the very beginning of the timeline, I'm going to click and drag the arrow cursor into my layers panel. It automatically created a new group. I don't want that group, so I'm actually gonna click and drag this arrow cursor into the original group. I'm then gonna select the old group and push delete. We now have this arrow cursor. Select that and go into the inspector settings. I want this arrow cursor to land directly on our button. So I'm gonna move forward in the animation to the point where I want the cursor to land. So I'm gonna drag this arrow cursor right onto our button. Now I'm gonna jump over into the property settings and find the position. We're gonna go ahead and click to add a keyframe. Now I'm gonna move back to the beginning of the project and move the arrow off of the screen. Apple Motion is gonna go ahead and automatically animate that so that the arrow pops in just like so. It's still a little bit jarring, so let's go ahead and re-enable our keyframe editor. I'm gonna click and drag and select all the animation parameters and then select Ease Both. So now we should have a nice smooth animation. I wanna make it look like the arrow actually clicks on the button. So what we're gonna do is select our rectangle, hold shift and select our arrow cursor. This will select all three items. We're gonna right click and create a new group. A group allows you to move around multiple objects as a single entity. Let's go ahead and rename this group to be button. Making sure your group is selected, come back to where the animation happens. We want our animation to start right here. Let's go ahead and find our scale parameter under the button group. I'm gonna to click to add a keyframe, then I'm gonna move forward a few frames. We'll click and add another keyframe. Now, if we open up our keyframe editor, which can also be reached with command eight, you'll see that we have a straight line in our scale. I'm going to go ahead and select both of these animation keyframes. I'm gonna right click and select interpolation and we're going to select Bezier. Clicking and dragging on the right side, we want to go ahead and click on this small handle and drag up. So we should now have this little bump of an animation. If I play through, we can see how the subscribe button grows larger as if it was clicked. If we wanna enhance that animation, we can make it even a little bit larger. So I'm going to click and drag on that handle up even a little bit more. So we have our basic click animation, but I want the color of our rectangle to shift as the animation plays out. Selecting our rectangle, I'm gonna jump into the shape settings. We'll find the beginning of the click animation and we'll click to add a keyframe. Then we'll move forward, click on our color icon and I'm gonna select this white color and then drag down to the dark grays. 
So now if I play through, we have our text coming in and our arrow clicking on the button. The last thing I want to animate is for everything to slide off of the screen. So let's go ahead and come to the last half of a second. Selecting our button group, let's jump into properties. I'm going to find the position parameter and click to add a keyframe. Then we're going to move forward to the end of the animation and click and drag on the Y axis so that it animates out. So we should now have an animation in just like so and an animation out. So that's the basics of animating an Apple motion, but there are a few parameters you should know when you want to publish this over into Final Cut Pro. Dragging our playhead to the end of the animation, we need to tell Apple Motion that this is where the animation ends. To do that, push Shift M. That's going to give you this green marker. Double clicking that green marker gives you this extra dialog window. You can change the color of the marker if you want, but we want to look at the type. Currently it's set to standard. We want to change this over to build in optional. Now if we push OK, Apple Motion now knows that this is the beginning of the animation. If we didn't do that, Final Cut Pro would actually dynamically shift the length of the animation. So if we were to set this 5 second title as 10 seconds, it would actually double the time the animation takes to play out. But by doing this, the animation will only take 1 second. Now moving to the end, we need to do the same thing for the end animation. So finding where the end animation begins, we'll push Shift M again double click, find the type and set it to build out optional. So to send this to Final Cut Pro, we can go up to file and select save. Now we can type in whatever we want for the name of this title. I'm just going to put subscribe button. Next, we can actually create our own category for organizing in Final Cut Pro. I'm going to go ahead and select tutorials, but if you want a new category, there's this button at the bottom. After that, we're just going to go ahead and push publish. All we need to do now is open up Final Cut Pro. There's no need to reload Final Cut, it'll automatically show up here. Just go on up to your titles like with any other title and locate the category that you put it in. I put it in the tutorials category and right here we can see the subscribe button. I'm going to click and drag that down onto the timeline. So now if I play we should see that our animation plays out exactly as it should. One last thing we need to take a look at is title backgrounds. Currently, if I were to select my subscribe button and use the transform tool on it to move it around, it will also move the background. But there's a really, really easy fix for this. We're going to jump back over into Apple Motion and locate the title background. Go ahead and delete that and now push Command S to resave it. We can reload Final Cut Pro or redrop in our title. Now, if I use the transform tool, it will move independently. So that's the absolute basics of using Apple Motion. Hopefully this gets you started on your Apple Motion journey. And if you are interested in learning more, I have a full playlist of Apple Motion tutorials right here. Also for my patrons, I'm going to be doing an exclusive patron only beginner course in Apple Motion on August first. So if that interests you, consider signing up for my Patreon links down below. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.